Hello and welcome back to our AI series. Previously, we've been working on our AI to see us and hear us, but now let's give them something to do. Let's make them patrol an area via a patrol path. So in this episode, we're going to set up an AI behavior component and create a patrol path system to allow our AI to navigate around the patrol path um, until they see us or hear us. So let's get started. So to get started with our patrol path thing, we need to have a patrol path indicator somewhere where we can indicate what route the AI can take. So let's go ahead and create a new actor type and we're going to call it here AI object underscore patrol path point. And we're going to go in here and we're going to give this a simple sort of debug look so we can actually see it in the world and place it wherever we like. So let's go ahead and give it a simple, uh, let's go for a, let's go for a static mesh and give it a cylinder. And we'll choose an upright one like so. Um, but I'm going to squish it down. This, make it a little bit bigger like that. And I'm going to give it a different material. So something I can use a debug material for. So I'm going to go to make a new material and do M debug. Uh, let's do debug. Oh, that'd be fine. And in here, I'm just going to give it a, a blank color to be into our emissive color. And I'm going to change that to, let's say, green. And I'm going to change the type here from. Um, opaque to translucent in the blend mode and I change the shading model as well from default lit to unlit and then in the opacity we're going to put in a scalar value which is one left click to create that and the scalar we're going to set to 0.6 okay and there is our debug uh, in fact let's make it a bit lighter let's do 0.3 okay um, and if you want to, you can render two sided if you like, so you can make it look a bit better, look more interesting um, as the shape goes, but uh, that would do for us. Okay, so let's apply that to our patrol path point. I'm going to go into here, debug, and let's do M for debug. There we are. There it is. I also want to turn off all collision on this as well. So let's go down and change it to a no collision. Okay, it's just there for visual aid so we know which way or where it's going. So we also want to add an arrow into here. This will know which way we've orientated it. So let's put an arrow in. And this arrow, we're going to just rise up a little bit off the ground. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's go change the arrow size here to like maybe 1.5. And that's good. Go. Okay. Anyway, facing X, if you haven't really got it facing X. And the reason why we're using the arrow is because we can use it to help us debug which way we want the character to look when they get to that patrol path. Okay, so we're going to save that and we can close that now. So the idea is that we can drag these out into our scene as indicators of where the patrol path would be. I can just drag this out like so and move it around as I see fit. Now, as you can see here, we're getting some Z fighting because of the collision. Uh, sorry, not collision. The uh, the size of the shape and its positioning. So I hope you get rid of that because it's annoying. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything bad for the game. It's just an annoying thing to see. Let's go to our static mesh here. I'm just going to move it down a little bit so it clips through the floor somewhat. There you go. Let's get rid of that not annoying little flashing going on there. So let's add in a couple of these to make a root. And so I'm going to duplicate this across, like so. And that's this. Okay, so now we've got a, a patrol path points there set up. This could be key locations along in your level or whatever you want to do for the play, uh, AI's positioning. Okay, so next thing we do is set up a way for to us assign these Control path points to our NPC. Now, what we're going to do here is going to create a component that we can drag and drop onto our NPC to use a patrol path. 
So let's create a new blueprint class and choose an actor component. And we call this one AI behavior component. And we're going to go onto there and we're going to add the variables patrol path. And the patrol path is going to be a map. So let's change the type here to um, patrol path point object. And in here, we want it to be a map. So you change it from a single variable to a map there. And we're going to change it from an integer to a float. Now, the reason why we have a float there is because then we, what we're going to do later on is make it so that when we reach a point, we can use that float to determine how long it should wait at that point before it moves on to the next one. So that's all good. Uh, next, we'll make sure that instance is editable is ticked. And hit compile and save that. Okay. Next, we're going to go into our NPC and add that component to their actor. So add AI behavior to their component. So we'll be doing other things later on in the series as well, where we're adding more to this component. So it's going to be really useful for us uh, down the line. But right now, all we need on there is the patrol path stuff. So that's all good. Compile and save that. Now, if I click on him in this scene, and scroll down the details panel to find AI behavior, I should see the option to insert patrol paths. I can click on here, choose add, and I can pick a route out for each one. So just add in sequence the route he should take. Like so. I can use these times here to determine how long you should wait for each one. Let's do zero seconds for the first one, one second for the next one, uh, two, zero, and maybe three for the last one. Okay, so he will be waiting at each one of those points. And hit save. And next thing we do is go to the behavior tree. So in our behavior tree, we currently got this move random location. So rather than doing move random location, we'll be doing something in different instead. We'll do a patrol path, but we only want to do patrol path if uh, we don't have a, um, a patrol path. Uh, sorry, we don't want to do random location if we don't have a patrol path uh, issued. So what we're going to do here is have another selector coming off of this. And plug that in there. Now, we're going to make another task here to do the patrolling. If the patrol fails because it doesn't have one, it will just go up to selector and then pick the move random location instead. So let's create the aforementioned task here to create the patrol path. So we go to new task, BT task blueprint base, and we're going to name it. Oh, I hit the key correctly. Uh, there we go. We're going to name it BT task underscore uh, patrol. And in that patrol, we're going to go to functions and add in oh, the override. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, override execute AI. There we go. And in here, we need to first of all get the patrol path and see whether or not it's valid or not. So the way we do that is go to the controlled pawn, drag this out, and do get component by a class. And you want to choose the AI behavior component. And for the first check, it's going to be checking whether or not this is valid. So does it have one? So do is valid. Plug that in. Like so. If it's not valid, we're going to finish execute. But it's not going to be successful. It's going to fail. The next check is going to check the patrol path inside that behavior. So we're going to get the patrol path. And we're going to check, check how long it is. Okay, its size. So if you look for the map settings here, you'll see you've got length as an option. So click on that. And we're going to say if this is um greater than zero then to another branch again if that's false we want to finish execute and fail it that means we haven't got a patrol path assigned okay so next that means we actually do have a patrol path assigned so what i'm going to do is take this patrol path here and i'm just going to promote it to a variable so i've got it there i can use so promote to variable patrol path 
Now, also in the variables, we also need to know what is the current path we're heading towards. So we go to variables, add new one, and do current control index. And this will be an integer. And it's going to start at zero, so it goes to the very first point in our list. Speaking of which, we're going to make a new custom event to call it move to patrol point. And when we reach, uh, move to call move to patrol point, we're going to drag out our patrol path. We're going to get the keys for it. And we're going to do, oh, get a copy. And we're going to get the copy of the current patrol index. So if it's zero, you'll get the first one. If it's one, you get the next one, and so on and so forth. And that will return the actual actor of the patrol path in our world. So with this here, we're then going to tell our thing to do AI move to. And do that task there. Now it does need to know who is the controlled pawn. So up top here, we've got controlled pawn coming from the execute AI. So drag from control pawn here and just promote it to a variable and plug that in. Makes it easier to get hold of this. And so down here, pawn will be control pawn. Next is the destination, and that's going to be the location of this patrol point. So get location and put that into there. Uh, acceptance radius, uh, you can change this if you like, but keep it at five. It's totally up to you what you want to do with that. And on success of this AI move to, actually, let's do on fail first. On fail will be the same, it'll just fail and finish execute, and then that. Uh, if it does succeed though, we want it to not finish the whole thing, we want it to wait for a certain amount of time. So on success here, we do set time by event. And from the event here, we're going to do create. Actually, let's just custom event. It'll be fine. Custom event. And this would be on uh, end waiting. Now, the time of this timer is going to be the patrol path. Get. Oh, no, sorry. Not, uh, keys. And then get copy of the control, uh, current patrol index and then we want to find the value assigned to it so drag out from that map again do find and plug that into our get there and this will return the amount of time we should be waiting here so plug it into time and the rest into keys now when it, that time has finished or on end waiting will get called and when it does end waiting, we're going to take the current patrol index here and we're going to increase it by one. So we're going to increment it like so. And when we do that, we're then going to call this function again, move to patrol point. There we go. So what we have to do now is go back to our execute here and along the end, as we set patrol path, is we're going to call that move to patrol point. Okay, so we're getting the keys, finding which one we're currently working on, get that location, moving to that location, um, and if it's successful in moving to that location, it'll get the keys, find out how long it should wait there from the find, set time for the waiting, and then end, when it ends waiting, increase the patrol index, and then move to the next patrol point, and so on and so forth. It'll keep doing that until it reaches the end. So speaking of the end, it'll eventually get to a point where the patrol index is no longer valid because there is no more patrol points. So, what we do is before we take to move to patrol point, we are going to do current patrol index and check if this value here is valid. So, let's drag out our patrol path, get the length, and we want to see if this value here is greater than the length of this. So uh, if this value, is, so let's say our length is one, the current control index starts at zero. We reach the end of, that would be um, 
uh, the, the, which the end of that first patrol point, that increases to one because of the increment. The length is still equal to one, but we're no longer equal equal to it. We're greater than now. Won't work. So, uh, sorry, I want to be greater than or equal to. Sorry, yeah, greater than or equal to. There we go. Um, yeah, if it's greater than or equal to, then we want to say, hey, we've reached the end. What do you want to do next? Uh, but if it's false, it'll just do the move to patrol point. Just carry on going. But if it's true, we want it to either loop back or end. So I'm going to set it to continue a loop by telling it the current patrol index here to be zero. So set patrol index here to zero. And then call move to patrol point again. And that means he'll just do a continuous loop around the whole entire thing. Okay, let's uh, save this. And we're going to go to the behavior tree. And on that selector here, we're going to do patrol. And hit save. Now let's take a look at this in game and see what he does. Now, for the purpose of this, by the way, for testing, I'm going to go to the AI controller and just turn off the target perception by disconnecting it. That way I can just watch him go around in circles. Okay, so it's going to go to each point, wait there for a certain amount of time. And, ah, the problem is, the time is set to zero. So if it is set to zero, that means he's just going to stay there forever. We need to actually tell him to ignore it if it is set to zero. So let's go to that BT task patrol again. And on this find here, we only want to do the set timer if uh, this value here is greater uh, than zero. And put that there. Well, actually, I'll tell you what would be actually a better way of doing this. Uh, we're going to take the, uh, the find value. And I just want to make it a little bit above zero. Okay, so when I put in zero, I mean I want it to be just a little bit above zero. So it's almost the same as instant. So we just do a uh, max value. So max float. And we'll put in that find. And also we'll put in 0 0.1. Put that into time. So if the find value is two seconds, it'll choose two because two is higher than 0 0.1. Put in zero, it'll pick 0 0.1 because it's higher than zero. So that way it's always going to pick a value. Let's test that again. That should give us a more elegant end there, like so. And it should go around the whole entire loop. You can see him waiting for that certain amount of time for each step. And it's back to the beginning. Okay. Now, obviously, if we want a patrol route, um and he sees us then he'll leave that patrol route and come after us because we've been set to abort so to test it out we'll put the npc back on their target perception here and i'm just going to move my character to start a little bit further away just go over here play okay and watch them go around and then they see me and they'll come after me and stop doing their route and if i lose sight of them I can they will eventually give up, go back, and redo their patrol route. Oh, God. I just heard that there. There you go, he's lost me now. So it's gone back to that investigation spot to hit where that sound was. And now it's going back to the patrol route. There you go. And there we go, we've now got a simple patrol path system in our game, allowing our AI to have a route for them to take. However, we're going to add a little few extra pieces to this in the next episode, such as rotational and also actions they could do at those certain points as well. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for your continued support. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.